Hello, my name is Lukas Turner and I want to give you an update on particle nodes. Now, in this video um, I want to start building a very basic uh, particle effect using the new features that I've uh, made and then later on I will show you two uh, demo cases I've made which are uh, a little more complicated but also um, slightly more real-world uh, usage. So. Let's get started. First of all, um, particles or um, particle nodes are a modifier, which is um, in line with all the other physical effects that we have in Blender. So, um, what you have to do is use this new particles modifier. As you can see now, most of the settings are in the physics panel. So going over here, um, I'll explain most of these settings down here later on. For now, the most important um, button is this one, which links the particle system to a node tree. We currently don't have any particle node trees here, so first thing I'm going to do is add a new node tree. So now this is linked. And uh, you may notice that um, I can select this tree here. So um, basically, uh, multiple particle systems can share the same node tree. All right. So in order to edit this, of course, we need a node editor. I have to switch this to the particle node. The node tree is completely empty at the moment, and if I open the menu, you, you can see this is completely unorganized at the moment. That will change, of course. Now, the first node uh, that we usually need in a completely new particle effect is an emitter and that acts as the source of particles. And if I click here, you get a pretty basic new emitter type. This um, emitter node basically works like a group node. So if I press tab key, I will just enter the emitter group here. Now this is completely empty, so the emitter does nothing. I can just run the animation, nothing's happening. The idea here is that um, you are basically creating an emitter type. And uh, this emitter type can then later be reused in different contexts for different systems. So you can recreate these features. The internal nodes that we add here are just apply to the particles once they initialize the particle state for all the new particles that this emitter generates. And the actual source that we are now going to, going to add is this create particles node. Now this is just one possible variant. This is uh, rate based, so you can uh, create a, a seamless particle rate here, like now it's 24 point something particles per second. This is uh, actually per second, it's corrected for the uh, frame rate, for the render frame rate here, just to make the effect a little more independent of the settings. So it's not per frame, actually. The uh, particles that come out of this node are completely blank, so to speak, they're totally uh, uninitialized. And the next thing we're going to do here is we want to um, set the particle's uh, attributes. So the next node we are going to need is this node. This is a pretty important node, set attribute. And uh, we can just link this in here, which means that this node will now work on the particles created by this node. And if I click on this button, you see we get uh, quite a list of 
attributes, standard attributes at the top here, and also um, custom attributes of uh, different types that you can just uh, add to the particles. Uh, you can compare this with the list of attributes in the particle system. You can see this is just a subset, though not all the attributes are accessible here. It's just because, well, you, you, not all attributes of the particle are actually uh, settable. For example, you cannot change the particle ID, stuff like that. Okay, um, arguably the most important attribute here is probably the particle position. So that's what we're going to set here. Now this is just a, a constant value. If I change this, you can see that particles are created oops, quite far away. So let's reduce this a bit. And you can see uh, there's still nothing, ha nothing happening here. So um, in order to get a little more effect, I will just quickly add outside of the emitter gravity node, which just applies the scene gravity to all these particles. You see now they fall down. Okay, um, now this is of course not uh, very interesting. So uh, one of the most useful effects here is to uh, randomize the particle position. Uh, one way you could do this would be this kind of generic uh, random node which just generates random values for all the particles um, but more useful is probably the sample surface node. Now this is um, a node that randomly generates points on a mesh surface which is um, a very standard case for uh, particle emitters. Um, well in order to use this of course we need an emitter mesh. Let me just quickly add one here for example, icosphere is always nice. Now I can link this node to the icosphere and just take the position that it generates and plug this into the set attribute node. And ta da, we get particles emitted from the sphere surface. Uh, also notice that the uh, sphere is completely separate from the actual particle object. The particle object is basically just the the coordinate system for the particles. So um, usually you can just keep this in place somewhere. You don't need to move it around. We can move this mesh independently. Now. Um, This node at the moment only has a position output and a normal output, which is the, the interpolated um, data on the mesh surface. Later on we can also have uh, stuff like vertex groups and uh, vertex colors and any kind of custom attribute that you might add to a mesh. Um, so that might be quite useful. Then. But for now it's really just a more of a placeholder node. Okay, uh, yeah, don't want uh, to do too much complicated stuff here, but uh, one more typical case that we can add is uh, we can change the initial velocity of the particles by adding the velocity attribute here. Now, um, if we just set a constant value, we can see the particles basically shoot off to one side. Now, um, a very typical case for would be to simply use the normal uh, on the mesh surface, at the same point of course, and to initialize the velocity. So what happens now is we get you know, a slight normal velocity. We probably want to increase this a little bit and uh, in order to do so we need a vector math node. This can be used to simply multiply this vector by some 
scalar factor. So that's pretty much. Well, this is this looks quite nice. Now, as I said before, this is basically a group node. So what this means is you can take any of these parameters and just expose them in the interface. So this is actually the velocity. And what you get from this is a kind of configurable emitter type. So now you can control this stuff from the outside. That's pretty cool.